the unseen world of the Bible. Addendum, the Intermediate State, 26th of February, 2023. Our learning objectives for this session are four. First, to define the intermediate state. Secondly, to test some common evangelical beliefs. Thirdly, to marshal biblical data, that is, proof texts. And lastly, to summarize apparent revealed truth. Our lesson theme is taken from 2 Corinthians 5.8. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. The intermediate state. This is the period of time between our bodily death and our future bodily resurrection. In a simple scheme, we believe and persevere until we are absent from the body. Then we are present with the Lord, awaiting our resurrection at his return, and finally to reign with him forever over nations. Some common evangelical beliefs that may be true. Angels will come escort us to heaven. We shall see our believing loved ones. Our deceased infants are there waiting for us. And some saints have been waiting for hundreds of years. We will become angels with halo and wings. But must we attend endless church services? Will we be embarrassed by our past sins? Hmm. Our investigation of biblical data will take these steps. First, we shall look at evidence from before Jesus' bodily resurrection, citing verses that show how humans were taken bodily into heaven, how some humans were taken spiritually into the afterlife, and certain promises of delight in God's presence. Then, other evidence from after Jesus' bodily resurrection. According to Jesus and his apostles, according to the book of Hebrews, and according to the book of Revelation, providing a summary of tentative hypotheses or a possible doctrine of the intermediate state. So then, evidence from before Jesus' bodily resurrection. When some humans were taken bodily into heaven, Genesis 5, 4. Enoch walked with God, and he was no more, for God took him. And 2 Kings 2, 11. Suddenly a fiery chariot with horses of fire appeared and separated between the two of them. Elijah went up into the storm to the heavens. This leads to a first tentative hypothesis that God has taken some righteous individuals bodily into the afterlife. Then, God has taken some humans spiritually into the afterlife. In the encounter between the witch of Endor and the ghost of the prophet Samuel, when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman said to Saul, Why did you deceive me? You are Saul, the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up from the ground. Jesus told this story. Now it happened that the poor man died, and he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades he lifted up his eyes as he was in torment and saw Abraham from a distance and Lazarus at his side. Upon the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. And Jesus said to a crucified thief, Truly I say to you, 
Today you will be with me in paradise. This leads to another tentative hypothesis. Righteous humans who died used to go into the afterlife where they appear in an identifiable bodily form. From the Hebrew Bible, we learn that there is delight in God's presence. God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol, the grave, for he will receive me. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will receive me with honor. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. Another tentative hypothesis states, the righteous anticipated being protected by God in the underworld and one day being received into his presence in heaven. Now evidence from after Jesus' bodily resurrection. According to Jesus himself, I go and prepare a place for you. Leading to this hypothesis, Jesus is preparing a place in which we may dwell with him. And then according to the book of Acts, Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Allowing us to hypothesize, upon death, the righteous are able to see Jesus in the heavens. And according to the Apostle Paul, I am hard-pressed between the two options, having the desire to depart and to be with Christ, for this is much better. Whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we live by faith, not by sight. So we are confident and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. If our earthly house, the tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made by hands, eternal in the heavens. Our tentative hypothesis states, Upon physical death, the righteous go into the presence of Jesus, awaiting their resurrected body. And according to the book of Hebrews, You have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, and to tens of thousands of angels, to the festal gathering and assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven. And to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous people made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks better than Abel's does. So we hypothesize, upon physical death, the righteous in Christ enter the heavenly Jerusalem. Now, according to the Apostle Peter, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not delaying the promise, as some consider slowness. According to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So we have come to believe that the time between death and the end-time events will seem but a few days. With more evidence from after Jesus' bodily resurrection, we turn to the book of Revelation. They will walk with me in white, 
because they are worthy. The one who conquers in this way will be dressed in white clothing, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, and I will declare his name before my Father and before his angels. The one who conquers, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also have conquered and have sat down with my Father on his throne. To each one of them a white robe was given, and it was said to them that they should rest a short time until the number of their fellow slaves and their brothers who were about to be killed, as they had been, were completed also. A great crowd that no one was able to number, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, dressed in white robes and with palm branches in their hands. And they were crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. These are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation. They are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. The Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and will lead them to springs of living waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. O heaven, you saints and apostles and prophets, a great multitude in heaven, saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power to our God! Leading to this tentative hypothesis, Jesus will share his glory with the righteous and acknowledge them before his Father. They will serve as priests in the heavens, praising God, and God will comfort them. So, by way of summary, we conclude with these hypotheses. Upon death of their body, before the resurrection of the dead, Christian believers go to be with the Lord Jesus, who shares his authority with them, honoring them before the Father and rewarding them for their good deeds. They are dressed in priestly clothes and serve God who comforts them. This intermediate state may seem but a few days before believers return to earth with Jesus, receive their resurrection body, and begin reigning with him over all the nations of the world.